tell your story. Change the conversation. Organized by students. TEDx Youth at SHC. My dad had an adage, and he used to tell it to me all the time, like whenever he had a chance. Life is a race. Run, run, he would say. And for a while, I thought my dad was just incredibly enlightened, having come up with something so profound. But it turns out that he just stole that line from a really famous Indian movie. Three idiots, if you've heard of it. <laughs> and when I really thought about it, the only time I'd ever seen my dad run for anything was for hand sanitizer at the start of quarantine. <laughs> Now, obviously, I didn't tell him that because I value my life. But I did ask him why I should be running. No response. I persisted and asked him if life was truly a race, then what was the finish line? Again, no response. But this time, I did get an angry glare and a lecture about my attitude. <laughs> but what I really got from my dad that day was the understanding that people put speed on a pedestal. Lists like the Forbes 30 and the 30. Glorify success at a young age, and my concern is that today, people are prioritizing speed for the sake of speed, all at the cost of quality. It's only when we truly slow down can we find our path in life. Now I run track in high school, and all my friends talk about this pit in their stomach before the start of a race, a queasiness, a knot. And that feeling is a natural part of being human, just like the desire to rush is. It's hardwired into our brains to prefer speed. In fact, humans receive dopamine or the happiness chemical just by completing tasks and checking things off of a list. So obviously, the most natural thing for them to do would be to rush to the reward. And this innate need for speed that humans have is only made worse by our education system. Schools require students to complete timed tests, timed essays, and timed projects. In essence, we're being taught to prioritize speed. So it's not surprising that in such an environment, so many students don the "speed first" moniker, and this mentality that they have follows them into their adulthood. I mean, I can almost guarantee that each and every one of you has felt rushed. The majority of people in the U.S. admit that they rush to buy things they don't particularly need, and this rushing behavior that people in exhibited culminated in each of them wasting thousands of dollars each year. If you still don't believe me and need some more confirmation, just look back to the state of our stores during quarantine. People rushed into stores and fought, literally fought, over toilet paper. It sounds ridiculous when I say it like that, but it's true. People bought more toilet paper than they needed for a lifetime, let alone a lockdown. And this speed-first mentality that we have isn't just present in our toilet paper buying behavior; it's been present with us for centuries. Take, for example, the five-five stick of dynamite that was Napoleon Bonaparte, arguably the smartest military strategist of all time. I mean, everyone's heard of Napoleon, right? But do you really know why his reign came to an end? Well, Napoleon was at the height of his power, so he decided that now was the perfect time for him to lead his troops to chase the retreating Russian troops into the heart of Russia. But Napoleon was so focused on defeating Russia that he forgot where it was that he was going. Napoleon was about to lead his troops into one of the coldest and most desolate places on planet Earth, and before he knew it, the Russian winter had set in. To be clear, it wasn't the Russian Empire that finally did Napoleon in; it was the Russian winter, and it could have easily been prevented had Napoleon just slowed down enough to see where he was going. But I'm not blaming Napoleon entirely. Nor am I blaming any of us for buying toilet paper in bulk. We're so trapped in this go 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 
mentality that it becomes second nature. Amy Hope, CEO of a design systems company, remarks that the urge to rush to the finish line is hard to suppress, but that ultimately, when we prioritize speed over quality, we end up with neither. For example, following one of the most traumatic and emotional moments in American history, 9-11, Congress passed the controversial Patriot Act. Now, the act was put forth in front of Congress just a month after 9-11, on October 23rd. And Congress was in a rush to pass legislation to make sure what happened on 9-11 would never happen again. And so, despite there only being two copies of the Patriot Act for the entirety of Congress to share, and a majority of Congress not reading the act, it passed that very same day with the vote of 357 to 66. Now, the act gave the government the ability to search people's private messages and monitor their private calls, quickly leading to everyday people's privacy being infringed upon. In the heat of the moment, Congress rushed the decision to pass the act and failed to slow down enough to truly see the future consequences and future implications that the act would have on society. I make it sound like I'm above rushing. I'm not. In fact, I spent, I spent most of my life as a victim to the feed-first mentality. I know I said I started running track in high school, but I've really been running my whole life, running towards decisions. I know it sounds cliche, it sounds cheesy, and it is, but it's also true. My parents have always tried to give me the best they could, and they've always pushed me to be the best version of myself. Even as an eight-year-old, I remember my parents telling me that I needed to make decisions. Now, my parents believed that I would have a higher chance to succeed in life if I knew what I was going to do with it early on. So, they pushed me to decide on my future career from a super young age. Over and over again, they brought up my career in every situation that they could until I cracked. The winter of eighth grade, I told my parents that I wanted to be a cardiothoracic surgeon. Now, did I know what CT surgeons did? No. But I did know that my parents were happy. And more importantly, they were off my back. And so, I was happy. That summer, though, my parents told me that I had to go to India and tell all of my relatives about my huge decision in person. So, I quickly found myself in a room surrounded by Indian aunties. Now would be a good time to mention that Indian aunties can be some of the scariest people on planet Earth. I mean, seriously. You can be talking to them for three seconds, and they'll be able to figure out your deepest, darkest, most soul-clenching insecurities that you have. And their comments are raw and unfiltered, too. So it's an understatement to say that I was nervous. But eventually, I mustered up the courage to say, everyone, I'm going to be a cardiothoracic surgeon. The whole room was dead silent. My heart was beating so fast and so loud, I thought someone might actually hear it. But a second later, the whole room broke into discussion. Everyone had conflicting opinions and thought I would have chosen something different as my college major and my future career. They listed off careers ranging from biochemist to software engineer to lawyer. And as I heard them speak, I felt strangely sad. There was a whole world out there, so many worlds out there, that I would never get to experience all because of that one decision I made as a 13-year-old. And I knew then and there that I couldn't live with that kind of regret on my shoulders. And so I told my parents and the rest of my family that I couldn't do it. I told them that I wasn't ready to make such a huge decision yet. And luckily for me, they understood and supported me. And it was from this experience that I learned, truly learned, 
what the value of slowing down is. It's only when you really slow down do you have the chance to reflect on what it is that you truly want to get out of each action that you take and each decision that you make. Now, the best way to actually slow down is a little bit tricky. But in my opinion, the best way to slow down is to really stop and understand the problem that you're facing. Albert Einstein is quoted as having said, if he was given an hour to solve a problem, he'd spend 55 minutes thinking about the problem and five minutes thinking about the solution. We'll naturally start to slow down and live more intentionally if we just start focusing on the problem before rushing to a solution. Finally, we can come together and work towards understanding that not everything can or should be done fast. It's OK to not know exactly where you're going as long as you slow down enough to figure that out. Everyone's favorite swearing British celebrity chef Gordon Ramsay didn't show an interest in the culinary arts until well after high school. Ian Fleming didn't write James Bond until he was 45. Roald Dahl didn't write his first book until he was 40. And yet, all of these people were masters of their craft. They all understood that it's OK to slow down in order to truly find your path in life. But hey, maybe my dad was right all along. Maybe life is a race. And if it is, by all means, run it. But before you do, slow down enough to see where it is that you're going. Figure out what your finish line is. Because after all, if you don't do that, then you really are just running to nowhere. Thank you. <laughs>